Okay, so then the final test that we have left to go over is the two sample t test. And one of the things that you have to remember is that this is a difference of means test. Okay, it is a difference of means test. What does that mean? Um, back with COVID, when some students were coming to school and other students were learning from online, one of the things as a teacher that I wanted to know was whether or not there was a difference in the average scores of the students who were online versus the students who were taking the class in person. So if you think about it, of course it makes sense that the average scores of those students who are online versus those students who are learning in person are not gonna be exactly the same. But the question is how much of a difference is statistically significant to say that in fact there is a statistical difference between these two groups. And so that is the whole purpose of the two sample t-test. So one of the easy things about this, because it is a difference of means test, is that usually, not always, but usually the null hypothesis is simply going to be that the mean for the first group is the same as the mean of the second group. So in the case of the students learning online versus the students who are learning in person, my null hypothesis could basically be that the average scores of the online students is going to be the same as the average scores of the in-person students. And there's nothing wrong with writing out what it is that you're doing. Of course, you can just use like group one and group two, but you want to specify what those groups represent. Then for your alternative hypothesis, this is where you have to read the question. Am I trying to determine whether there is a difference between the two averages? Or am I trying to determine whether the kids learning online are scoring higher than the kids who are learning in person? Or do I want to know if the kids who are learning online are scoring worse than the students who are learning in person? So that information is going to be given to you in the problem itself. And you do have to stop and think about what your alternative hypothesis is going to be. Because when you go to the calculator, you are going to have to make a choice. So is it that there is a difference between the two? Is it that group one is averaging less than the average of group two? Or is it that the average of group one is greater than the average of sample two, okay? And then of course, there are two assumptions that have to hold true in order for this test to be valid. And that is that the data is normally distributed and there are equal variances. I don't know, but they could ask you, what are the two assumptions? And you would have to write down that the data is normally distributed and we have equal variances. This is for the AI course. But most of the time, you're just gonna see it actually written on the actual problem itself. Don't get confused with a normal distribution problem. It is just that these are the two assumptions that have to hold true in order for this test to be valid. If they give you statistics, they could just give you the mean and standard deviation of each group, or they could give you actual data. In the cases that they give you actual data, once you go to the test, you're going to have to have entered your data under stat edit, list one, list two. Make sure you keep track of which one is group one, which one is group two. It depends on the problem again and how you are writing it. And then you're gonna go to stat test, option four, two sample t-tests. You're gonna input either data, if you actually have data that you have put into list one and list two. If not, you would choose stats if all they did was give you the mean and standard deviation always pooled. So there's going to be a part of the calculator is going to ask you if the data is pooled. You're always going to say yes for the AI course exam. So it's always going to be pooled, pooled meaning equal variances. And then of course, choose the correct alternative hypothesis. And that is how you're going to get your p-value to make a conclusion. So this is a question from May 2021, paper one time zone two exam. At Springfield University, the weights in kilograms of 10 chinchilla rabbits and 10 sable rabbits were recorded. The aim was to find out whether chinchilla rabbits are generally heavier than sable rabbits. The results obtained are summarized in the following table. A t-test, okay, so this problem is a t-test, a two-sample t-test problem is to be performed at the 5% significance level. Write down the null and alternative hypotheses. So the first thing is you're trying to find out whether chinchilla rabbits are generally heavier than sable rabbits. 
So I'm going to go ahead and say my null hypothesis is that the mean of the chinchilla rabbits is equal to the mean of the sable rabbits. And I'm going to go ahead and identify that this is the average of the chinchilla rabbits. And that's going to be the average of the sable rabbits. So that's my null hypothesis. My alternative hypothesis is going to say that the chinchilla rabbits average is greater than the sable rabbits because that is what the aim is trying to determine. So that is going to be my alternative hypothesis. It is better for you to write this in symbols. Sometimes the problem will ask you to write this in words. If you write this in words, then you have to take into account that you have to include the word mean because this is a difference of means test and you have to make reference to the population. So it has to be in words that the population average or the population mean of chinchilla rabbits is the same as the population mean of the sable rabbits or you have to say something to the effect of the mean for all chinchilla rabbits is the same as the mean for all sable rabbits. Something to the effect of population and of course the word mean has to be in there if you are going to write this out in words because this is a difference of means test. For part B, now it says to go ahead and find the p-value for this test. So we are ready to put this into our calculator. Things to note, in this two sample t-test, we have the same amount of data and that is not always the case. And sometimes students freak out when let's say these two values, pretend these two values are not here, they don't exist. And so notice this one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight values, whereas the other one, the other variable is gonna have 10. And sometimes students are like, wait a minute, I'm gonna get an error message. No, you are not. This is a two sample t-test. The two sample sizes do not have to be exactly the same. In this particular problem, they are, and so I wanted to make note of that so that in case you get a problem where they are not the same, it is okay. That is not the case for anything related to chi-square, okay? Chi-square goodness of fit, yes, of course they have to match list one and list two. And then when you do the chi-square test of independence, it's going into the matrix anyway. But in this particular case, for the two sample t-tests, the two sample sizes do not have to be the same. Okay, so now let's go ahead and go to the calculator and enter these values into list one and list two. Okay, so we're gonna go now to the calculator, but before we go to run the two sample t-test, we have to enter the data. So first go to stat edit. Remember, we're gonna clear these lists because we don't need this data anymore. Under list one, we're going to write down the first group, which is for us, the chinchilla rabbits. So that's gonna be 4.9. 4.2, 4.1, 4 4.4, 4.3, 4.6, 4.0, 4.7, 4.5, and 4.4. I notice that the calculator now reads L1 11, which means it is ready for the 11th number, which tells me that I have entered 10 numbers. So I'm good because there are 10 numbers for the chinchilla rabbits. Now I go over to list two and I'm gonna write down the values 4.2, 4 4.1, 4 4.2, 4.5, 4.4, 4.5, 3.9, 4.2, and 4.0. And like always, remember to stop, take those five seconds to double check that you have inputted your data correctly because you are just going to take the answer the calculator is gonna spit out at you. And if you don't take the time to double check, it is possible that you make a mistake. So take the time always to make sure that you have entered everything correctly. So now we go to stat, test, we're gonna go down to option four, two sample t-test. Then we have entered data. Our data list one is L1, list two is L2. The frequency list, there's only one of each number. This is where you have to choose your alternative hypothesis. If you remember, we said the alternative hypothesis is that the chinchilla, which is our first group, is greater than the sable rabbits. So on the calculator, we have to choose greater than. We're saying that the mean of group one is greater than the mean of group two. Pooled, yes, always yes for the AI class or the AI exam, and then press calculate. So from here, 
the p-value is 0 0.0408, so the p-value that we got from the calculator is 0 0.0408. As a reminder, these leading zeros are not significant. That is why to three significant figures, you would write 0 0.0408. If you were to write 0 0.41, that is not three significant figures, that is two significant figures. So that is why when in doubt, always write the entire answer and then round. Okay, so now we're ready to write down a conclusion. So we're gonna say that since our p-value of 0 0.0408 is less than the significance level, which they told us is 5% of 5%. Basically, that means that we will reject the null hypothesis, suggesting that chinchilla rabbits are heavier than sable rabbits. And then that's gonna be your final answer. Hope you found this video helpful. Remember to subscribe to my channel for more help with math so that you can say, yes, I can do math with confidence. Good luck on your IB exams. Until next time, thanks for watching.